Well, thank you again, everybody, for coming. And um, as, as Doug and Dale so kindly introduced, uh, my name is Alec Brainerd from, from Artisan Boatworks in Rockport. And um, we've been at it since 2002, so, so going on 20 years. Um, this isn't a great picture of the boatyard, but it sort of uh, gives you a little sense of the scale. Um, so we're at uh, 416 Main Street, which is about halfway between Main Sport and uh, the Camden Snow Bowl, if anybody knows, knows where that is. Um, the old Rockport quarries are actually just, just past us. So, so we're on Main Street, which is now a secondary side road, but it used to be the main, um, main line in Rockport from the kilns up to the quarry. And the uh, old railroad runs through the, uh, the, the sort of left-hand side of the boatyard, as, as you can see in this green. Um, a lot of the boats that we work on are uh, restorations of classics, uh, new replicas of classics. We, we work with a lot of designs of Harishoff boats, Crown and Shield, Sparkman and Stevens, Alden. And a lot of the boats that we do are smaller day sailors. Um, this is a, a 29 footer that we uh, will talk more about a little bit later sailing down in uh, New York City. Um, a lot of the boats that we restore um, are, are pretty interesting. This is a, a Clinton Crane designed IDEM scow that was built in uh, the year 1900. And there were, I believe, 13 of them built for a summer community up on Upper St. Regis Lake in the Adirondacks. And 12 of those original boats still sail together on that same lake with big gaff rig cotton sails. And uh, we've, we've restored a few of them and uh, are, are talking about doing a third. It's interesting construction. I don't know if, if you, you probably can't see my mouse cursor, but there are longitudinal trusses about a third of the way between the backbone and the shear um, that, that make these boats, you know, more like modern wooden surfboards really than, um, than anything that, that we might be more familiar with. And this is what they look like, uh, you know, once they're all fixed up and, and underway. We also do a lot of, um, you know, modern boats that are supposed to look old. That's really become a specialty of ours. Um, and this is a, a yacht tender we built a few years ago for a, a larger boat. And the, the Wooden Boat Magazine did an article on her. And um, the, the specification was that she look as much as possible like the um, Corsair tender from, um, I believe it was Vanderbilt's big Harishoff yacht. Um, but she had to incorporate all of the modern systems that, that um, you know, most, most people would want these days. So quite a bit uh, hidden under the hood, so to speak. This is a, a 1958 Newburton Wallace power boat that we restored and sort of the same, same situation, an owner who wanted the boat to look very pure and un understated and untouched, but still um, take advantage of, of every system that a Hinkley picnic boat might have. So she's got the bow thruster and the, you know, all the, all the bells and whistles on the dashboard, the automatic launching anchor, um, um, uh, aqua drive thrust bearing, tons of sound insulation, uh, you, you name it. And it's, uh, you know, as, as we've learned over the years, it's, 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 it's really easy to install a lot of systems and, and, you know, make a boat look a bit audacious, but to keep it really pure and, and you know, understated uh, takes, takes a lot more effort. Um, a lot of these big restorations and, and replicas have, have found their way to various magazine covers and we've won a few awards over the years, but, but I think what I'm the most proud of um, in the past 19 years is, is the storage and maintenance program that we've, that we've built. Um, we're up to, gosh, I think about 80 boats that, that we take care of and we deliver them each spring to, to you know, ports from Northeast Harbor here in Maine, all the way down to Long Island Sound, out to Nantucket. Um, so we've, we've really, um, you know, amassed a great collection of boats in our buildings and, and also some wonderful relationships with, uh, with customers um, and owners all over New England. Here's a shot from inside one of the three storage buildings in the foreground is a, a line of Dark Harbor 20s that race out in Islesboro. Uh, a few of the high boats that used to race in Camden, there's a Rosinante, a bunch of Buzzards, Harishoff, Buzzards Bay 15s, a couple of motor launches. It's, uh, it's, if, if any of you have an opportunity to come up and visit the yard, it would be uh, fun for me to show you around in person. It's a, it's a, it's a great collection. 
Um, and, and almost every one of those 80 boats gets painted and varnished every year. So we have a, a phenomenal crew, uh, not just of, of boat builders, but of uh, finishers and riggers as well. Um, everything's brush finished and we uh, use a lot of the Epiphanes products, both their, their two part and, and single part paints. Um, here's a, a Penobscot. Penobscot is a mower designed R-class boat that uh, um, one of the members was just talking about restrictions in Canada. This, this boat actually belongs to a, a Canadian gentleman who would come down and sail it in Camden each year. But this year, because of COVID, um, he, he couldn't bear the thought of not using his boat. So we, we trucked it up to Mohone Bay about two weeks ago, and she's being rigged for him up there. So although we can't cross borders, boats uh, still can. This is one of the, the first new boats that we built back in 2007, uh, Dark Harbor 17, a BB Crown and Shield design uh, that we built for uh, the Saltonstall family out on North Haven. And then we, uh, we followed that up pretty quickly with a restoration of an original um, that, that wanted to be able to keep up with them in the annual round the island race. And then uh, a couple of years after that, we did a third. So, so we've now done three of these Dark Harbor 17s and we've got a few others in the buildings that we take care of. And what's, what's really fun is uh, in partnership with Lyman Morse over at Wayfair, uh, we've developed this day sailor class as part of Camden Classics the last weekend in July. And it's, it's just had tremendous success. I think there were 12 or 14 boats uh, in this size range racing the last time they did it. And uh, there, there should be quite a few more next year. So it's a, it's a separate course that starts with all the big boats, but um, you know, is able to get back to the Yacht Club in time for the um, um, drinks and, and dinner and, and not be left abandoned out in the uh, calm as the tide starts to turn. Another design that we've done quite a few replicas of are the Harishoff Buzzards Bay 15s, um, also known as the Watch Hill 15s. The Marconi version is the, uh, the Watch Hill, the gaff rigged is the, is the Buzzards Bay, and I, I think we've built eight of these now. And there's uh, the setup of, of the most recent one that we did for a family in uh, Marblehead. A lot of the shots that I'm showing today are uh, by Allison Langley, Ben Mendelwitz, Jamie Bloomquist, Jeff Scher, um, most of them with permission, um, not all of them with credit. So uh, just a general shout out to, to all of the great photographers that we work with. And if I uh, forget to mention anybody's name, I apologize. Uh, Billy Black, I think there's a few of his shots in here. This, uh, this one is by, uh, by Allison. And here's another one by, by Ben Mendelwitz. These, these Buzzards Bay 15s are amazing. They're just, it's like the cockpit of a Harishoff 12 and a half with the, the, the sex appeal of, of like an America's Cup defender. So it's, a, it's, it's I, I think the reason we've built as many as we have is I've never stumbled upon a better design for just a pure traditional gaff day sailor. Um, one of the really exciting things that we get to do sometimes is, is rediscover designs that, that have been lost for, for many, many years. And this was the case with the uh, 29 foot Harishoff Buzzards Bay 18s. Um, Harishoff built five of them back in 1903 and all five are just completely lost to the ages. There's no um, evidence of what happened to them. Some people are thinking that they might've been lost in the hurricane of 1938. Um, and mass, or, or they might have just been too extreme uh, in their construction to, to, to have lasted much, much past the 40s. Um, so this is the only original photo that's known to exist of, of a Harishoff Buzzards Bay 15 and, and Maynard Gray dug this out of his files. And uh, we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to build a, a brand new one just uh, using plans at the, um, in the uh, Heart Nautical Collection at, at MIT. And uh, this, this first one was called Uncas. We built her in 2009. And then uh, again, there was a, a neighbor who wanted to keep up. And so he uh, had his own built and uh, we're, we're looking forward to having the two boats race against each other, hopefully here at uh, Camden Classics. Here's another design. Um, you know, there, there are thousands and thousands of designs out there in the archives of Sparkman and Stevens, John Alden, Joel White, um, you know, Harishoff, of course, that are, uh, are, are just dying to be built. And, and this is a, a little crown and shield knockabout that uh, hangs on the wall of my office. That's, um, I think she's something like 32 feet on deck, but 
She's designed with a little inboard engine, uh, which would make her a great coastal cruiser. And you can see how the boom doesn't overhang the transom nearly as much as most of these. So um, a little bit more manageable than, than some of the big race boats. But um, yeah, so, so fun to work with these older designs and, and sort of get into the heads of the designers and, and bring these boats back. Here's another slightly more wholesome um, Harishoff design. Um, uh, I don't, don't know the name of it. Oh, Louise. Louise was the original. There was just one built um, and just another fun boat to maybe bring back someday. Um, we also do a fair amount of modern stuff. Um, this is a W22 that we built for Donald Tophius down in Newport. And it's based on the Sakonet design that, that Joel White did, which was a double ender. So we, we squared off the stern for Donald. And this is a epoxy composite construction with, with glass on the outside and all Harkin hardware and North sails and a fun, fun project. Um, we do a lot with uh, CAD design, CNC cutting, 3D casting, um, you know, often in, in an effort to replicate some of these older patterns that are no longer with us. We, we have all the old catalogs from Wilcox and Crittenton and such, and, and sometimes there's a need for a piece of hardware. And if we, if we can't find it, then, um, then we can reverse engineer it and uh, 3D print it in wax and then do, do investment casts. So this was the, uh, the rudder head for that, uh, that W22. Um, we're doing more power boats these days. Um, this is Vim, which, which I showed the slide of before. She's a, a 1950s Newburton Wallace power boat that spent most of her life out in Islesboro and uh, is, is completely restored and, and actually for sale through our brokerage right now. Um, Alera, one of the original um, Harishoff New York 30s is in our care. Unfortunately, her owner lives in Switzerland and uh, for gosh, the past eight or 10 years, he's come to Maine every year and lived on the boat for all of July and August. Many of you guys have probably seen him out there single-handing the boat um, all over Penobscot Bay and, and uh, it's, it's breaking his heart to, to not be able to come. So Alara is gonna be in the shed probably this summer for her third year in a row. Um, another type of boat that we've done quite a lot with lately that, that probably is, is more um, poignant to this presentation are older Cruising Club of America boats, um, the, the CCA turned out some, some incredible designs or, or designs that were inspired by the CCA rule uh, back in the 50s and 60s uh, when they were still building those boats in wood. This is, uh, this is one that's being restored right now called uh, Tejeta. Her, her new name is uh, gonna be Delphinus and she'll be going down to Southern Connecticut here in a few weeks. Uh, we take care of a handful of Concordia yalls. This is a uh, Dame of Sark. And there's another, uh, larger Concordia 41 called Feather that we take care of. And then of course, uh, my beloved Nora, um, who was built by uh, William Healy down in Miami in 1966 is a, another CC era boat. And I, I thought what would be sort of interesting to talk about today was, was you know, the work that we do on these 50s and 60s um, CCA type boats is, you know, in a lot of cases, updating to make them more um, usable, um, you know, both from a safety standpoint and a, and a, and a usability standpoint for, for modern sailors. And the, the things that these boats need are, are pretty, um, pretty standard, all upgrades that you've all made on your own boats. But I think what's interesting is, is that, you know, the, these boats that were mostly about speed back in the 50s and 60s are now considered classics. And so the aesthetic becomes a much more important part of, of integrating these, these upgrades. And so I uh, included a series of slides here that, that sort of demonstrate um, you know, how, how difficult it is in some cases to uh, you know, upgrade a classic boat, um, but, but still keep it um, you know, looking very, very understated and, and classic and, and refined. Um, one thing we do a lot of is replacing winches and we've got a, a, a couple of great vendors out there for uh, all bronze self tailors. So um, getting rid of all the old captive wire halyards and uh, um, various other finger pinchers. Um, electronics are another big one. Uh, this is a, a pretty standard installation 
where we'll do swing outs in a companion way. And there's a, uh, I wish my cursor worked so I could point to things, but there's a piano hinge outboard on, on either side of these displays. And then a little uh, barrel bolt um, on the fore and aft axis so that when you're not sailing or if somebody wants to, to you know, come and go while you're underway, the, uh, the, the two panels hinge forward and, and re-secure um, in, in their sort of shut position. And uh, it keeps them out of the way and uh, you know, still, still readable. Um, you know, something as simple as installing a, a radar and a hailer on a, on a Concordia mizzen mast um, can, can, can be a huge challenge. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of reasons. This is, this is the jumper strut on the front of the mast and nobody makes a small radar anymore that will fit inside the, um, you know, the triangle formed by the jumper stay, which, which actually isn't on in this photo. So we, we made up a custom bronze jumper strut that was long enough to, uh, to just clear the radar by a quarter inch on the front and the backside. And then the radar has to be obviously painted a nice tasteful color. So it, it disappears um, into the rigging and, and the hailer as well. Um, you know, just installation of some simple antennas, um, you know, with, with, a, with a classic Concordia like that, it's, it's hard to just plop them on the deck so they get a nice custom fairing block and um, a paint job to match the radar and some of the other paint on board and all the wiring has to be covered up down below. So it's, uh, th there's, there's a lot to it. We've installed a ton of these four blade max props and, and that's, that's been another issue with a lot of these 50s and 60s boats is they have tiny apertures uh, between the rudder and the stern post. And so, so taking advantage of, of the you know, extra horsepower that's available with some of the new Volvo and Yanmar and beta di diesels, um, you, know, you need that fourth blade or you know, some, some, some of these boats still have fixed two blade props, but uh, when, you, when you get up to four blades, um, it really smooths out the ride and put the boat in reverse, it actually stops. So it's, uh, it's been a common, common thing. Um, this is a bow thruster installation we did on that Newbert and Wallace powerboat. Um, there, there, there is a great way to install uh, a bow thruster in a traditional plank on frame boat. And we've, uh, we've done a few and, and it actually involves caulking with cotton around the uh, perimeter of the tube where it exits, uh, exits through the planking. It's a, not a great picture, but um, a, a, an electrical installation uh, in a head behind an access door. Um, Lots of, lots of you know, access issues with small spaces. This is a fun series of slides. Um, this is another Concordia y'all uh, that wanted a roller furler, which seems pretty straightforward until you start talking about wanting to maintain the self-tacking jib club on the, uh, on the bow. And so we did a, a custom end fitting in the upper right um, and, and made a new jib uh, with, a, with an outhaul block built into the, um, into the clue. So, so that the boat can, can you know, ha have an independent outhaul line. And then the two blocks in the lower left are uh, from a supplier we use often named Jim Reinick down in Hull, Massachusetts, who makes these little bronze shell blocks with Harkin ball bearings. So they, they operate you know, just as beautifully as the Harkin blocks, but, but look really traditional. So now we've got one block for the outhaul and the other for the furling line. And we routed them down. We, we cut out the bottom of the spinnaker pole chalk and put two more of those Hark and Shiv bronze blocks in there to fairly the line aft. And then two more um, stand up blocks, also bronze, up to two bronze cam cleats. And here you can see a little earlier in the, in the installation. So, you know, a, a roller furler on a modern boat is a pretty easy thing to do, but when you try to make it, um, fit with the bronze hardware and, and sort of the classic look of a Concordia, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more challenging and uh, we, we love those challenges. This is a, uh, this is a really spectacular piece. Um, Jim Reinick has started making this traveler car for, uh, in, in bronze. So it, it uses the same uh, Harkin profile track and, and traveler car, but, um, but all, all in bronze and it'll, it'll turn a beautiful green in a couple of years. And here it is rigged up. We actually took um, the wood cheeks off of an original Concordia uh, main sheet block and riveted them and glued them to, to this bronze foundation um, that, that covers up the Harkin shivs. So we, we tried to make it look as, as original as possible and 
we've, uh, we, we've got Jim making these little bronze cam cleats that you can see in the left, but the bigger bronze cam cleats uh, are still waiting for a, uh, uh, um, you know, an investor to come along and, uh, you know, take care of the tooling for that, but it's, uh, it's high on the list. Propane tanks are another huge one. Almost none of these 50s and 60s boats had propane systems. Um, this is one that we did for a Concordia yawl that just fits under the seat. There's a little notch down in the bottom uh, right-hand corner that fits over a knee and, uh, and uh, you know, fully ABYC compliant. Um, this is a Delphinus that Augie Nielsen, um, 41 footer that was uh, built by Paul Luke. And this is kind of a fun before and after picture, um, you know, in, in thinking about places to find room for, for propane lockers on, on these boats. So this is, this is the before picture and somebody's already added a, a modern main sheet traveler. And, and this is a picture I just took this morning. Um, you can see we're putting all new bronze um, winches on the boat, but we actually moved the main sheet traveler forward 10 inches in order to make room for a new stainless steel uh, propane locker. And the lid for the propane locker is leaning up against the taff rail. We actually were able to cut out the traditionally cocked full thickness teak deck. And uh, it's a long story, but we removed it in one piece and then veneered some plywood to the bottom of it and then refit it. So once, uh, once the hinges are on, you'll just see a really low profile um, eighth inch seam around the perimeter of the tank. And uh, I think it worked out pretty well. We'll see. There's an autopilot installation. Uh, pretty another another common thing that a lot of these boats ask for. Um, the, the this boat's a wheel steering, um, and the square top on the on the top on the shaft is accessed through the little bronze port just aft of the uh, the big bronze winch. So um, so here we're installing an Edson tiller arm and a big custom bronze. Uh, foundation for the for the new autopilot. Um, we're working with Muir in uh, as Australia. I think they're actually made in Tasmania, but the, the uh, windlass on the right here is um, an electric windlass with uh, bronze uh, bezels around the foot switches. And we've, we've installed quite a few of those. On this power boat, it's actually self-launching, so you can, you can raise and lower it from the helm. Um, a lot of the projects that we've been doing lately are also working with with much bigger boat yards and and on much bigger um, you know I guess you'd call them super yachts, and this is a, a 84 foot mast we built for Hodgson Yachts a handful of years ago. Uh, it's a David Pedrick design. Uh, the boat's called Moonrise now and and lives up in Seal Seal Harbor on Mount Desert Island, but uh, some of the most spectacular hardware. Um, everything's custom. This was all made by Lyman Morris Fabrication. And, uh, you know, the, the inside of this mast is the most complicated array of, of G10 and carbon fiber and, you know, electronic conduits that, that I've ever seen. All internal halyards, um, just, just a spectacular project that kept us busy for a little over a year. Here's the mast stepped in the boat and uh, there's, a, there's a whole array of beautiful custom highly polished stainless uh, Harkin blocks around the base of the mast. And uh, yeah, really, really first class job. There she is at the dock. And, uh, you know, just another example of how, you know, taking something um, and, and having it look really classic and understated, but, but packing in every modern uh, advancement known to man is, uh, is, is really time consuming. And uh, again, this is, this is Moonrise that, that was built by Hodgdens and, and we did the whole rig, uh, everything above the deck. Um, another big project we did a few years ago was a 140 foot classic motor yacht out in San Diego. Uh, we built the tender for the boat and, uh, and, and then they asked us to, to stay on and do most of the deck furniture and hatches. So we uh, were uh, madly building parts here in Maine and, and shipping parts and, and people back and forth to San Diego for, for most of a year. And this, uh, this big wraparound settee is, is uh, completely removable. Uh, you can just see underneath it, the bottom of the electric docking winch for the stern lines. So the whole settee comes apart and the crew can bring the boat in stern two to the dock and then um, you know, tie her up and, and all the, uh, the dock lines and the winches um, are, are hidden under the settee when it's all put back together. Um, this was another interesting challenge. This, this whole hatch is actually fabricated from solid stainless steel 
and is welded to the deck and, and it's got a modern, um, you know, waterproof, I think it was a Bomar access hatch. And, and so we, we were handed this big, big um, welded steel hatch and, and asked to make it look uh, like it was built in, in the 1930s. And, and this was the result. And here's the, uh, here's the mothership. So we, we built the foredeck hatch, the ladder, all the deck boxes, uh, the upper and lower settees, um, that, that big fantail settee is on the, the lower deck. And, and then of course the tender. Here's, uh, here's the upper deck, boat deck settee that we did. Um, these, these boxes in the foreground have the winching motors for raising and lowering, lowering the tender on these big davits. You can just see the two um, lines sort of in the lower left disappearing into the captive winches that are, that are housed inside these boxes. Um, so, so a lot going on. This was actually a fun day in Camden. I think my, my daughter Adele is watching the presentation and uh, the crew anchored off Camden for a day and they brought us up to see the boat all put together with the cushions in place and the mints on the pillow. And as we were up on the boat deck getting the tour, um, the girls yacht club sailing class came by in all their Optimus prams and um, my daughters got to wave down to all their friends and uh, felt, felt pretty proud about that. Um, with regard to bigger classic yachts, more the older designs like the Harishoffs, um, there's, a, there's a ton of momentum in Europe right now um, with, with these boats racing in the Mediterranean, um, a little bit here in New England with the Classic Yacht Owners Association, but the real uh, momentum is definitely in Europe. And this is a Harishoff Bar Harbor 31 called Joker, um, which some of you may have seen in the, in the sort of backyard at Seal Cove Boatyard. Uh, I first discovered her there when I was working there in the early 90s. And uh, we, we, we got her from Bob Vaughn and, and brought her back to, to our place. And she is uh, patiently here awaiting a restoration. And an exact sister to her was, was just fully restored um, over in Italy last year and launched in the fall. And she won just about every race that she entered. Um, and so there's, there's some great momentum for these bigger Harishoff boats and we're uh, excited to, to play a part in that. And um, here's, a, here's a picture of what she's gonna look like when, when she's finished. So lots of, lots of fun boats we get to play with, um, mostly wood, but you know, spanning uh, lots of different eras from you know, the late 1800s right, right through fully modern stuff. And it's, uh, it's, it's exciting, um, I think, particularly for me, uh, looking for ways to, to keep these boats relevant and apply modern technology and, and modern techniques to them in a way that, um, you know, doesn't mess with the, with the aesthetic or the performance, um, but, but allows owners to, to have the, the comforts and the safety features that they, uh, that they want today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's my last slide. I'm going to stop the share and uh, would love to answer any questions that anybody has. Oh, oh, oh no, no, oh, I was I'm just going to interrupt first and just say that was just amazing. I mean, I've seen your boats. Those of you who sail around in Penobscot Bay, I have to admit, we're all guilty of every time we see a dropped a gorgeous boat, we're all like, oh, that's one of Alex. Um, they are really spectacular, but now having seen all the work and the sort of the hidden bits that you often have in them, it's, it's even more impressive. So anyway, thank you. I'm suspect uh, questions. Yeah, go ahead, Nick. Alex, Nick Brown. Um, <clears throat> down here in Newport, we're having a hell of a time getting anybody to do anything. <laughs> we clearly need very skilled people. So a two-part question, are you getting what you need with famous Maine craftsmen, but are the schools, Iris and Penob, uh, uh, not, you know what I mean, near Bush, uh, are they doing any, anything for you? That, that's a great question. Thanks, Nick. Um, we have an amazing crew. We, 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 we're, we're at about 15 strong right now, guys and girls, and uh, most of them have been with us for a long time, and, and they're, they're dedicated and, and smart and uh, skilled. So we're, we're really fortunate. Um, we're busier this year than we've ever been. So, um, you know, it, it, it stinks to say no, but we've had to turn down a few projects this spring yeah. as well. Um, you know, get, I, I think the conversation about, you know, the, the, the um, 
usefulness of both school students is, is one we should have over a rum sometime when they're, yeah. you know, you're not being <laughs> a little reported. offline because um, I've, I've very bluntly I've heard mixed reviews. Don't don't go any further. <laughs> well, I, I will say that I think the schools are great, and I've been on the board of the the Rockland Apprentice Shop and the Landing School, and I'm very familiar with what Iris is doing, and and I think those those institutions are are wonderful, um, you know. But I think that the you know the 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 non tan the skills that you can't teach um, are are becoming harder to find these days. And, uh, you know, our, our success rate with, with anybody under 40 is, is probably one in 10. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Um, a lot of these boats were not made with lifelines. Do you uh, leave them as such? I didn't see any pictures of any lifelines. Um, and I just wonder, you know, Obviously, there are plenty of boats that are modern that are not, you know, they're small. I'm wondering what you do about that. Yeah, good question, Anne. Thank you. Um, so Harishoff uh, actually refused to allow any of his boats to leave um, leave shore. He he was adamant that that his boats were race boats for inshore racing, and uh, if if somebody wanted a boat to do a, a well, the Bermuda race wasn't around back then, but but any sort of a transatlantic race, he he just wouldn't take part in it. So so most of these boats that are um, you know sort of pre nineteen thirty uh, race boats uh, do not have lifelines, and uh, they they tend to be followed by big hard bottom inflatables like the America's Cup boats today to to pick up the occasional misfortune. Um, but the, the later boats, you know, the, 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 um, the, the CCA Bermuda race boats that were built in the 50s and 60s, they generally all do have lifelines, um, you know, not as high as, as modern boats um, and often, you know, just a single wire instead of, instead of having an intermediate. Um, but, uh, excuse me. Um, but, but, but they are there, um, I'll, I'll, you know, we, we've done a handful of, of replacements. A lot of those boats come to us with those, those uh, stainless white lifelines that are coated with, a, with a, the white um, plastic stuff that doesn't allow you to see what's going on underneath them. So there's, there's been a, a trend lately in people uh, upgrading their lifelines to Amsteel, which I, I don't know if I love that or not, but uh, at least going with stainless that doesn't have the coating on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Alec, we have a question. Um, I believe it's, I think it's from Jeff Wish. Uh, are you building any Harrowshaw fish or petrels cold mode? Cold mode. That's a great question. That, that's one of my favorite designs. And we've, we've built one new fish that was a, was a edge glued plank on frame. And we've restored two of the original 1916 fish that are both here with us. Um, one of the great things about building in wood is that you know, building a boat that you've never built before takes exactly the same amount of time as building one that you've built 10 of, uh, unless you're so fortunate as to be able to build all 10 at the same time. So, um, you know, doing a cold molded fish would be easy. It, it would be, um, you know, a, a pretty straightforward process. There's also um, the Pisces 21 is the, is the uh, version of the fish class that Jean Ballou builds up in, um, in uh, Mount Desert Island and, and he does those in cold molded as well. Uh, and, and they're pretty similar. Thank you. Um, one thing I could mention quickly though is, is what we are building now. I didn't include any of the uh, current pictures in the in this show, but we're, uh, we're, we're building a new Harishoff 12 and a half uh, at the moment. We've, I think this is our fifth or sixth new one of those that we've built. And that's going to a, a lake here in Maine. And then uh, we're doing a really cool little cold molded uh, Bugatti powerboat that was designed by ATR Bugatti in 1946. And uh, it, had, it came to us with an original Bugatti engine that's being restored uh, by a specialist down in Pennsylvania to go in the boat. So it's, uh, it's, it's been awesome for me to be introduced to the whole world of Bugatti. And uh, we've been surrounded by car aficionados and, and uh, yeah, just another great, great history of a, a great designer and builder from back in the day. All right, we have another, we have another chat question. Are you able to involve owners, those with an interest and a level of competence directly in their project? So we, we try to as much as possible. Um, we allow owners to work in the storage buildings on their own boats. Uh, so we have a couple of families that come and do all of their own paint and varnish every spring. And 
we, uh, we always look forward to seeing them. Um, that doesn't always work, but most of the time it does. Um, we have a, a, a live stream camera in the shop. So if somebody's commissioning a new boat, they can actually watch the boat being built in real time. Uh, <laughs> we, we try really hard to, to, to convince them to only check in once or twice a day and not watch full time because that would be really, uh, it'd be like watching paint dry. But uh, um, there are a lot of decisions to be made. There's, you know, we, it's, it's, it's um, you know, the, the process I think of having one of these boats built is, is really the only justification to do it. I mean, there's, there's so many hours that go into these that there's no um, rational um, you know, justification for having a new boat built. So it, it has to be about the process. And, and so we work hard to, to make that fulfilling. Great. Um, anybody else? Alex, uh, Frank Cassidy here. Uh, you were building a, um, a Gil Smith cat boat. And if I recall, you were building it sort of in stages. Do you have a few words about that? Yeah, thanks, Frank. Good to see you. Um, so Whirlwind 2 has, has been a fun project uh, for a lot of reasons, um, mainly because it's, it's for a client who's, who's younger than I am. Uh, Yarrow Thorne is, is in his, his mid-30s, I'm guessing. And uh, it's, it's just really exciting to see a you know, a, a generation of contemporary boat lovers that are that are taking on these these big projects. And this is the first time I'd ever worked with Gil Smith designs. I've, I've always loved his his work. Uh, Don Costanza out on uh, Long Island has done quite a few beautiful Gil Smith replicas and restorations, which I've, I've admired in the Ben Mendelwitz calendars. And so the opportunity to do one uh, was, was just awesome. And uh, and so we uh, got an original hull model uh, off the wall at the, at the Maritime Museum there on Long Island and, and laser scanned it and worked with uh, Matt Smith, an architect in Barrington, Rhode Island, to develop a set of lines and, um, you know, offsets and, and construction scantlings based on other boats. And we're, we're building this boat in four stages. So we did the, the hull in year one, the deck and combing in year two, um, finished the, the uh, sprung deck veneer and the seats and all the, the beautiful varnish cherry uh, trim work uh, just this past year. And then uh, next year will be the final phase where we'll do the rig and the, the centerboard and rudder and sails and, and deck hardware. So she'll be uh, coming down to the Mystic uh, Wooden Boat Show in um, August this year. Usually that shows in June, but this year it's been pushed back to late August. And so we'll, we'll have her down there uh, in her current form where we'll be able to sit down with, with the whole design team and uh, talk about deck hardware layout and uh, all that fun stuff. So um, yeah, fun, fun project. There's actually a whole website dedicated to it. There's a link to it on our website, um, but there's a ton of great history and photos. Allison Langley's been following the whole project, um, both doing film and, and still shots. Um, you know, again, talking about owner involvement, that that's another huge part of our process is, is bringing in photographers that, that can document these, these boats being built. And, uh, you know, the owner can not only have his boat, but, but a great coffee table book, or in some cases, a movie um, to, to, to commemorate it. That's neat. Uh, just, a, just a comment. Um, yeah, everybody might think that Alex, with all these projects going along, is really organized. And <laughs> I've been to his yard, and Alex is really organized. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike most of us, Frank. <laughs> I, have, I have my wife to thank and a, and a great, great support staff. So I, I get all the credit, but I, I actually just get in the way most of the time. <laughs> so as a teaser, Alec doesn't know this um, yet, but I'm hoping that at some point, if and when we start to be able to have in-person gatherings again, that Alec might be kind enough to let us all come and actually see his yard slash museum. Um, it's a huge treat to see these boats just yeah. close up, you know, close up. It's just amazing. Alex's yard would be a great place for a gam. It? <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? It might even be worth coming from South Africa and the Pacific Northwest and Toronto. Would be. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. even supply the drinks. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. So hopefully we'll get to that point and hopefully at that point we'll find a time that you know, is agreeable to um, to Alec and his charming wife, Erin. And, and in the meantime, um, we're, we, we've learned uh, over the years to, to just close the place for the first two weeks of August. So we lock the doors and, and all go sailing. 
Um, but but outside of that, anybody who's in the neighborhood, please shoot me an email or send me a text, and and you know, happy to show people around individually, um, anytime. Oh, that's very nice, Alec. Thank you. And for those of you who are in the neighborhood, it's I mean, we drive past Alec's place practically daily. You know, so it's fun. So it's just sort of in our neighborhood, but it's you know, right on this sort of sleepy little street. Um, maybe you don't think it's sleepy, Alec. You live there, but. <laughs> It's not down on Route 1. It's just, it's a really lovely, lovely spot. And it's been fun to watch this business grow. I mean, we remember when they first started it and we're saying, oh, look, they're building a building down there. Oh, look, there's another one. Oh, it's getting bigger. Oh, it's growing. Oh, they've got a giant mask sticking out of that building this year. Well, no, we're doing that. Anyway, it's been really fun to watch the business grow.